Hi, welcome back to The Basement. I'm Steve Lewis. Today's episode will carry on directly from episode 116, U.S. Pop Culture 1963, Part 3. Of course, the Beach Boys had a big year in 1963, and as we know, they'll have a bigger year in 1964, with two studio albums, a live album, a Christmas album, ever bigger tours, their first number one single, their first number one album, and much else besides. There's too much to cover here in a short time, so I think what we'll do is we'll start out with two parts about the first quarter of the year, that is January, February, and March. Then we'll talk about the Shutdown Volume 2 album, which came out during that first quarter. We'll return to talk about the second quarter of 1964. Then, sometime in the future, we'll return to it to talk about the second half of the year, the All Summer Long album, and all the rest. This episode will be light on Beach Boys material. We'll talk more about them in Part 2. And then, of course, we'll concentrate on the Shutdown Volume 2 album, which will probably take, I think, a couple of episodes. As 1964 dawned, the death of President Kennedy about six weeks earlier was still much on people's minds. The days were short, and much of the country was locked in the deep freeze of winter. The top 10 albums in that first chart of the year included a lot of records that had been around in and out of the top 10 for a long time. There didn't seem to be that much exciting going on in the world of popular music. At number one on that first chart of the year, January 4th, 1964, was The Singing Nun, midway through her eventual 10-week run in the number one position. At number two was In the Wind by Peter, Paul, and Mary, which had been number one for the entire month of November 63. At number three was the second Barbara Streisand album, which had peaked at number two for three weeks in the middle of November. At number four, Elvis Gold Records Volume 3, which had been number three for two weeks in November. At number five, Trini Lopez at PJ's. This had been number two for six weeks way back in August and September. At number six was the West Side Story soundtrack. This spent a total of 54 non-consecutive weeks in the number one spot beginning May 5th, 1962. It'll finally fall out of the top 10 on February 22nd, 1964. At number seven, Maria Elena by Los Indios Tabajares, which was in the first of its two weeks at its number seven peak. At number eight, Joan Baez in Concert Part Two. This will peak at number seven for two weeks beginning January 18th, even higher than Joan Baez in Concert, which had hit number 10 about a year earlier. At number nine was the Peter, Paul, and Mary album. Their debut album had been number one for seven weeks in the fall of 62, and again for one week beginning October 26, 1963. The new Beach Boys album, Little Deuce Coop, had just entered the top 10 in the number 10 spot. Apart from the Joan Baez album, this was the only album in the top 10 still on its way up the chart. It'll peak at number four for two weeks beginning on February 15th. In top 10 singles on that first chart, January 4th, 1964, There, I've Said It Again by Bobby Vinton had moved into the number one spot and would stay there for all four weeks of January. Louie Louie by The Kingsman would be at number two for the entire month of January, right behind Bobby Vinton. After spending all of December 63 at number one, Dominique by The Singing Nun had now dropped to number four. As mentioned, her album would ultimately spend 10 weeks at number one. In his introduction to the Beatles on his show on February 9th, Ed Sullivan will recall some of the other major acts that have appeared on the show that season, including Sister Sereer, Belgium's singing nun. She would ultimately turn out to be a one-hit wonder. In the second of its two weeks at its number four peak was Since I Fell For You by Lenny Welch. Bobby Rydell's Forget Him was at number five. It'll peak at number four on January 18th. After 19 top 40 hits since the summer of 59, this will turn out to be Bobby Rydell's last time in the top 40. At number six was Popsicles and Icicles by The Mermaids. This will go to number three behind Bobby Vinton and The Kingsman for two weeks beginning next week, January 11th. Johnny Tillotson's Talk Back Tremblin' Lips was at its number seven peak, and Quicksand by Martha and the Vandellas was hitting its number eight peak. At number nine was The Nitty Gritty by Shirley Ellis. It'll peak at number eight for two weeks beginning the next week, January 11th. And rounding out the top 10 was Midnight Mary by Joey Powers in the first of its two weeks at its number 10 peak. Top 10 singles that will come and go in that first quarter included Drag City by Jan and Dean, 
written by Jan Barry, Roger Christian, and Brian Wilson. Surfing was the hot fad six months ago, now it's hot rods. Jan and Dean have followed up their July 1963 number one hit, Surf City, with Drag City. It'll go to number 10 for two weeks beginning January 18th. Surfin' Bird by The Trashman will go to number four for two weeks beginning January 25th, and Out of Limits by The Marquettes will go to number three for two weeks beginning February 1st. Hey Little Cobra by The Rip Chords, featuring vocals by Terry Melcher and Bruce Johnston, house producers at Columbia Records who also produced the single, will go to number four for two weeks after Surfin' Bird beginning February 8th. We talked about this one in detail back in episode 49, Bruce and Terry and The Rip Chords. Um, 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 um. A very cool single from Major Lance will hit number five on February 8th. For You by Rick Nelson will hit number six on February 15th with what will turn out to be his last top 20 hit for eight and a half years. Garden Party will also reach number six in the fall of 1972. Dionne Warwick will have her first top 20 hit with Anyone Who Had a Heart, written by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Bacharach and David had been penning hits together and separately since 1957 when they broke through with Marty Robbins' country crossover hit, The Story of My Life, and Magic Moments, recorded by Perry Como. Bacharach had also written some duds, including Three Wheels on My Wagon, co-written with Bob Hilliard. A very strange and out-of-character single for Dick Van Dyke in 1961, when he was known for his role in Bye Bye Birdie on Broadway, but hadn't quite yet achieved TV stardom with The Dick Van Dyke Show. It's a comedy western novelty song clearly inspired by Larry Vern's 1960 number one hit, Mr. Custer. It was Bacharach's first credit as producer and arranger. Fortunately for all concerned, it sank without a trace. There's really no reason to mention it here except that it's a really weird and hilariously bad single by some very talented people. Bacharach had been working with his protege Dionne Warwick since 1961. Their collaboration was beginning to pay off in a very big way with this single, which will go to number 8 on February 15th. Dawn Go Away by The Four Seasons will go to number 3 behind the Beatles' I Want to Hold Your Hand and She Loves You for three weeks beginning February 22nd. What Kind of Fool Do You Think I Am? from Atlanta-based vocalist The Tams. This is a very cool single featuring a doo-wop meets the grandfather of reggae type sound that deserves much better than its nearly forgotten status. It'll reach number nine on February 22nd. Al Hurt's Java will go to number four for two weeks beginning February 29th. California Sun by the Rivieras will go to number five on February 29th. Stop. And Think It Over by Dale and Grace will go to number 8 on March 7th. Diane Renee will have a hit with Navy Blue. A protege of Bob Carew, who was currently having great success writing hits for the Four Seasons, he co-wrote and produced this single, which would turn out to be her only hit. It'll go to number 6 for two weeks beginning March 14th. See the Funny Little Clown by Bobby Goldsboro will go to number 9 on March 14th. Like Bobby Vinton, Bobby Goldsboro's career will seem immune to the oncoming Beatlemania. He'll continue having hits on a fairly regular basis through 1973. I Love You More and More Every Day by Al Martino will go to number 9 on March 21st. And the Beach Boys' Fun, Fun, Fun will go to number 5 on March 21st behind three Beatles singles and the Four Seasons' Dawn. Among 1963 albums still climbing the charts as 1964 began, we had Elvis's Fun in Acapulco, which will peak at number three on January 18th. Rick Nelson sings For You, which will go to number 14 early in 64. It'll turn out to be his last top 20 album. The Smothers Brothers comedy album Curb Your Tongue, Knave, will go to number 13 early in 1964. A couple of John F. Kennedy commemorative albums will chart highly. Kennedy, The Presidential Years, 1960 through 1963, will go to number eight on the chart early in 64. And This is the Week That Was, the recording of a BBC tribute to Kennedy, which aired on November 23, 1963, will go to number five on the chart early in the year. Other late 63 hit albums still climbing the charts, Henry Mancini's soundtrack to the film Charade, and Yesterday's Love Songs, Today's Blues by Nancy Wilson. And now it's time to talk about an unusual rock combo from England that were creating such a stir at home and in Europe that even some U.S. news programs and magazines had started to take notice. The group, called The Beatles, had already released 
four singles and one album in their native country. The group were signed to Parlophone, one of EMI's family of labels. As a subsidiary of EMI, Capitol Records had the right to release music from their parent company and its many sub-labels in the U.S. Capitol routinely passed on records that were expected to have limited appeal in America. Until recently, Capitol had passed on all the Beatles records, allowing other labels to purchase the rights. By December 1963, the Beatles had become such a resounding success in England and parts of Europe that Capitol opted to release their next single and album, at least Capitol's versions of their next single and album, and to give them an all-out major promotional campaign. The single, I Want to Hold Your Hand with I Saw Her Standing There on the B-Side, had been released on December 26, 1963. With Capitol's backing, it entered the Billboard Hot 100 on January 18, 1964 at number 45. The next week, it went to number 3 and hit number 1 the week after that on February 1, 1964. On January 20, 1964, Capitol had released Meet the Beatles. The album contained nine of the 14 tracks that made up their second Parlophone album with the Beatles. Plus, I Saw Her Standing There, I Want to Hold Your Hand, and This Boy. UK albums were usually 14 tracks and didn't include songs already released as singles. American albums usually contained 12 tracks and American labels were happy to recycle singles onto albums. This meant that Capitol would be able to put together roughly three Beatle albums for every two in the UK. Of course, most American fans were unaware of this at the time. Also released in January was Introducing the Beatles on the VJ label. When Capitol passed on the first Beatles album, Please Please Me, VJ picked up the rights and had prepared an album for July 1963 release. They removed two tracks to conform with the 12-track American standard and cut off Paul McCartney's 1, 2, 3, 4 count in to I Saw Her Standing There, which they thought had been included on the master by mistake. Reportedly, unrelated management shakeups at VJ saw the album put on the back burner with it not being a high priority anyway. They didn't return to it until December, when it was clear that Capitol was planning a big promotion for the Beatles in America. The prep work they had done earlier in the year allowed VJ to get Introducing the Beatles, released on January 10th, 10 days ahead of Capitol's Meet the Beatles. I would say that there is a possibility that the Beatles will be discussed in future 1964 episodes. Of course, there were some other big album releases in January 1964, including Tender is the Night by Johnny Mathis, which will go to number 13, The Wonderful World of Andy Williams, Bobby Vinton's There, I've Said It Again album, Al Martino's Living a Lie, which will also go to number 13, the original cast album of Hello, Dolly, and in February, we got the third Barbara Streisand album, Pure Dynamite, Live at the Royal by James Brown, which will go to number 10 on May 18th, Johnny Rivers at the Whiskey A Go Go, which will go to number 12 in the summer of 64, the Serendipity Singers self-titled album, which will go to number 11 in the spring after their single Don't Let the Rain Come Down, Crooked Little Man becomes a hit, Moving on to March, on March 2nd, the Beach Boys' Shut Down Volume 2 album will be released. Of course, we'll be talking much, much more about this later. Also released in March was Dawn Go Away and 11 other great songs by the Four Seasons, which will spend two weeks at number six beginning April 18th. Glad All Over by the Dave Clark Five. It'll hit number three on May 23rd. After the Beatles, they're the second British invasion group to hit it big in America. Days of Wine and Roses, Moon River, and other Academy Award winners by Frank Sinatra will spend two weeks at number 10 beginning May 9th. Also released in March, the Gates Gilberto album. This one will take a while climbing the charts, finally reaching number two for two weeks starting August 8th. Another March release taking a while to climb the charts is Henry Mancini's soundtrack to The Pink Panther. It'll spend two weeks at number eight beginning August 22nd. Today by the new Christy Minstrels will be number nine for two weeks beginning June 6th. And Ray Charles' Sweet and Sour Tears, which will go to number nine for two weeks beginning April 18th. We'll leave it there for now. There is much more to talk about in this quarter, including movies, television, a little bit about the news, and of course what our very busy friends the Beach Boys were up to during this quarter. I hope you've enjoyed this start into the year 1964. I look forward to your comments. Please hit like and subscribe if you don't mind. I always appreciate that. We'll see you next time for more of the first three months of 1964. Have a good week. Bye. <laughs>